Morning, everyone. And happy Mother's Day. Let's have just a little bit of fun here. If there's anybody in in the room this morning who has had a baby within the last 12 months, would you stand up? All right, here's one back here. Let's give her a round of applause. Just stay standing. Now, I'd like for all the mothers to stand, or even if you raised a child that wasn't your biological child, but you raised one or more, everybody that's a mother, stand up right now. Now, all the rest of us are going to applaud them. Now, remain standing. Remain standing. What I'd like you to do is, we're going to, we're going to go to grandmothers now. So, uh, if you are a grandmother of more than five grandchildren, remain standing. Everybody else, remain. Uh, go ahead and take your seat. All right. More than five grandchildren. You can stay standing. See how long we stay in the running here. <laughs> All right, if, if, you have, if you have more than, uh, if you have eight or more, remain standing. Hey, we're still in there, babe. All right, here's, here's where we go crashing down, all right? If, if you have more than ten or more grandchildren, remain standing. Okay, R- Rita, how many you have? How many? Rita has 11. How many? 13. All right. Okay. Thank you. Y'all can take your seat. We do honor our mothers today. You're very, very important uh, to us. Normally on Mother's Day when I preach these sermons, I, I like to go to the Scriptures and find a text and work right out of the text. That's just the way I... I like to teach. I like to really center things in Scripture. You know, maybe it's a lesson on Hannah or maybe Mary, the mother of Jesus, or Elizabeth, the mother of John. But today I'm going to do something totally different and, frankly, a little bit out of my comfort zone. Uh, My kids used to say, Dad, about certain things, Dad, that is so cheesy. And I don't think people even say that word anymore. And I'm a little concerned that this may just be so cheesy today But I pray that it's not. I pray that it'll be a blessing to you and that it honors God. About two weeks ago, I went to Facebook and posted a a couple of questions on there. Uh, I I posted the questions, what is the most important thing that your mother has taught you? And secondly, how do you show honor to your mother? And so I started getting a surprising number of responses back to that. And what I want to do today is to share with you some of those responses. You know, the Bible tells us, Romans, uh, to pay honor to whom honor is due. And we just got through studying the Ten Commandments, and one of those commandments is, you shall honor your father and your mother. And so by listening to what a lot of people said about the way that the things they learn from their mother and what the, how the ways that they try to honor their mother, hopefully it will help us to be obedient to those commands, to pay honor to whom honors do, and specifically to show honor to our mothers. And so today, I want to share several of those responses with you. One of the things that our mothers taught us to do, and I, by the way, all these comments, I tried to take them and group them under certain themes or certain categories. And the first one is, our mothers taught us to love. And first of all, they taught us to love God. And in so doing, they were fulfilling God's instructions in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, which teaches, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And so one lady wrote this. Now, if I I got a response from you here, I'm going to call your name. But I got responses from folks that aren't members here. So one lady wrote, The most important lesson mom gave me was to love God with all my heart and with all my soul. Another person said, my mother taught me about Jesus and to always be true to him. Still another person quoted 3 John verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And then she wrote, when it's all said and done, that's the most important thing my mom ever taught me. Our mothers also taught us by their very example of the way they cared for us 
the way they provided for us and loved us, by their example, they taught us what real love is. I love what Jim Kirby wrote. He said, a mother's love is the closest example that we have in this world of the love of Jesus that he has for us. And then he said, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7, describes my mother's love. Anybody identify with that? Nancy Pope, whose mother gave birth to ten children, one of whom died as an infant, said this, My mother taught me that no matter how many children you have, and no matter how different they are, you love them all the same, just as God loves His children all the same. Even as we read these comments from people that are certainly not divine, do you already see biblical principles coming out in what they're saying? Another person said, My mother taught me unconditional love by giving it to me and being an example of love to others. And Wayne Clark very simply said, My mother taught me love and to show it. And then Wayne added these words, I love you, Mom. And I'm sure Wayne's mom's been gone for years, but he still loves her. Our mothers also taught us how to treat other people. You know, one of the ways that they did that was to teach us how to listen to people, how to speak to people. One high school friend of mine who uh, always probably talked a little too much said, my mother taught me not to talk too much. And then she put a big smiley face after that because she knew I would know what she was meaning. Another wrote, wrapped up in my mother's patience was her ability to keep her tongue well bridled at all times and in all affairs. She was a good listener, yet not one to engage in gossip. And then one other man wrote, my mom taught me that it's not what you say, but how you say it. Our mothers were teaching us what James taught us back in chapter 1, verse 19, when James said, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. One man's response was really funny. He said, my mom would say to me, David, hold your shoulders back. Because of mom, I'm not stoop-shouldered today. He goes on, Mom also taught me to say, yes, ma'am, to hold her hand, to walk her to the car, and not to eat before she was seated. Our mothers also taught us that family relationships are important. And they're simply teaching us what the Scriptures teach us all the way through the Old and the New Testament, and that is the value and the importance of family relationships. You know, long before we learn how to relate to people out in the world, we learn how to relate to and love and care for the people in our own families. That's where it all germinates, right there. And so, listen to what some people said. Lee Carroll simply wrote, Families stick together no matter what. Kim Jennings Schaefer wrote, Making memories and being there for your kids is more important than a spotless house. Any mothers want to say amen to that? <laughs> also, our mothers taught us selflessness and service. By teaching us and also by demonstrating to us the importance of being unselfish and focusing on other people, our mothers, I think, were just simply teaching us what Jesus tried to teach his disciples over and over and over again. That the greatest among you, Jesus said, will be what? Your servant. And so as we saw our mother serve, we learned that valuable lesson. Anita Lewis said, I learned selflessness, mercy, and love from my precious mother. And Brenda Jones wrote, The most important thing my mother taught me was that it's not always about me. Putting others first... And making people and family feel loved and cared for is very important to my own happiness. And then Wanda Jennings wrote this. Now that I'm old enough to understand, I realize how much my mom sacrificed for me to have all that I had. 
She was a single mother bringing home about $48 a week. Yes, it was a long time ago, but even then, $48 wasn't much. I can't remember going without. I wish I had realized then what I know now and could tell her how thankful I am that she was my mom. And so she demonstrated love. Rhonda Gilbert wrote, My mom has always been a great example to me as well as to my girls. She always gave to people and also gave her time. She did not let people know what she was doing. She was always in the background. Are you picking up any values, biblical values that moms teach us? Our mothers also taught us a lot of other godly values. I agree with the words of Abraham Lincoln who said, No man is poor who has a godly mother. One lady wrote, Mother taught me unconditional love by helping me and my children in my time of distress. You don't know this lady, but uh, her husband left her with three or maybe four daughters to raise when those girls were all babies. And her mother was a tremendous help to her at that point. She says, my mom also demonstrated in her life what it means to forgive others when they hurt you. Wanda Davis and Dennis Leftrick each wrote that their mothers taught them to be honest. I think it was Dennis who made that comment. I learned that uh, if I told her the truth, I didn't have to remember all the lies that I would have told otherwise. Our mothers taught us the meaning of faith and hard work. Melinda Hooper wrote, My mom always said, where there's life, there's hope. She taught me how to clean a house cook, and work for what I wanted. My dad died when I was young. My mother raised five kids by herself. She worked hard and gave us what we needed. Judith Thompson's comment not only reminds us that it's important to do hard work, but also to work smart. She says, my mom told me that when you say yes to something, You also say no to something else. Be sure to think about both. Pretty good advice. And Steve Bodiford said, My mother taught me to never quit praying and to realize that you are an example. And then our mothers, I think probably more than any other way, taught us by their example. You know, We're taught in Scripture, Paul wrote in Philippians, he said these words, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. So not only what they'd heard him teach, what they had received from him in writing, but he said, what you have seen in me. In other words, you've been watching my life. You have seen my example. Practice these things. I think the way that we learn probably from our parents more than any other way is through example, far more than what our parents say. It's not that what they say is that important, but even small children figure out very quickly that what mom and dad really believe is what they do, not what they say. And so as we watch their examples, that's where we pick up the real principles of life. And so a lot of people talked about the example they saw in their mother. One lady whose mother died recently wrote this. She taught me that a Christian need not fear death, and she showed me why. The only song that she requested for her funeral was Jesus Loves Me. That simple truth is the most important thing she taught me from the time I was a little baby. And the last thing I spoke to her as we sang that song as she was lowered into the ground. That example. Our firstborn daughter, Firstborn child, Mary Ann, wrote these words. The most important lesson I learned was how to serve others. Mama lived it rather than preached it to me. She still serves with such grace and understanding. And then our second daughter, Amy, replied this way. By her beautiful example, she's taught me that to love is to serve. She is the most giving person I know. And then she concluded with these words. You married a good one, Pa. To which the whole church said, Amen. 
Hey, babe, do I get any brownie points for that? <laughs> now, here's the, here's the last question. The first question was, what did your mother teach you? Well, you know, if we had time to really explore all the things I just mentioned, I mean, there, there are passages to back up every one of those things. They're just godly principles that so many of us did learn from our mothers that have made us the people we are today. But then the question comes, how do you show honor to your mother even today? I want to read a few statements from some members or some people who are not members here, that friends of mine from years back. And then I'll read some to you that you sent me. One person wrote, I honor my mother by the way that I treat my own wife. There's a heads up, guys. I honor my mother by the way that I treat my own wife. Another said, I pray for her. Still another person said, and this person's mother died a few years ago. Frankly, it was a pretty difficult relationship, but this is what she said. I made it a point to spend time with my mom, even though she could be difficult. And that person continued, time cannot be bought, and once it's gone, it cannot be replaced. You know, it's kind of like uh, the word to all of us is, while our moms are still here, those of us that still have our moms, spend some time good time, quality time with our moms. I'd give anything if I could go back and have some more time with my mom. Anybody whose mom's gone wish the same thing? Yeah, we all do. Another said, I try to honor her daily by the life I live. And I love this one. One man wrote, and this is funny to me. I love to honor my mom by buying her flowers on my birthday. She did all the work. (laughs) And then some of you sent these words to me. Dennis Leftrick wrote, I took her advice to heart. That sounds an awful lot like Proverbs 1.8 to me, where the wise man said, Listen, my son, to your father's instructions, and do not forsake your mother's teachings. Anita Lewis said, I try to emulate the value she instilled in me, and I call her every day to tell her how much I love her, respect her, and how much I appreciate the Christian woman and mama she is and has been to me. Steve Botterford's words really kind of match Anita's words. He said, I honor her by reminding her how much she is and has done and how much she still matters to me even today. Brenda Jones' answer is similar. She says, I give her affirmation, saying out loud how much I appreciate her. Another person said, I send her handwritten notes to express my love and gratitude. She never throws a single one away. Nancy Pope wrote, I honor my mother today by trying to not do anything that would bring reproach on her name or her Christian life. Kim Jennings Schaefer said, When my kids are with her, I make sure they give her the love and respect that she has earned. Pam DeMumbrium sent something that I thought was interesting. She said, I share my mom's memories with my family. She's very much part of our lives, even though she's been gone for 30 years. Also, I meet my brothers at the cemetery early on Mother's Day and reconnect over her gravesite. We pray, and then we go have breakfast together. Who knows, maybe right now Pam and her brothers are together, either at the cemetery or having breakfast. And then my son Wes wrote these words about his mother. He said, from before I can remember, she was teaching me core values of godly character. I didn't realize it at the time, but now that I have an amazing wife... I realize that mom set part of the foundation for the family I have today. The way I honor her is to pass on what she instilled in me to my kids. To love God, to serve other people even when no one is looking, and to honor God with my family. And then I want to, this morning, we've got some other important things we're going to do today. Today's comments are pretty brief. 
But I want to conclude by reading you one more statement as we extend an invitation for anyone that might want to respond. One final comment from this old high school friend. She wrote, I bring honor to her name and the Lord's name when I live out his truth. I have absolutely no doubt that if your mother is a Christian, there is nothing that you could do, nothing you could do that would honor her more, that would show her your gratitude more than to know, for her to know, that you are faithfully following the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, if you need to respond in any way to the gospel, maybe you're not a Christian, maybe you've never confessed the name of Jesus Ask to have your sins forgiven and been baptized into Him. First of all, that pleases God and pleases the Lord Jesus Christ. But it certainly would make your mama happy. It would fulfill her prayers and her dreams for you. There may be other needs that you need to respond to this morning. Let's stand. Let's sing together.